Phil, tell us all about you, yourself, where you're at, what you've been doing, um, and we'll jump into your career a little bit later. So yeah, I'm currently the head of engineering at D3T. Uh, the engineering department is now up to 104 programmers, which wow. uh, we passed the milestone of 100 programmers in January, which I was really pleased about. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been knocking around the games industry for, I think it's my 27th year uh, in total, um, about 38, 39 games, I think, released. Um, yeah, and it's always been uh, around the northwest of England, Manchester, Liverpool area. Um, and I've been, uh, yeah, been lucky enough to work with some really good companies and make some really good games. 1994, weren't it, when you got started? Something like that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet you've seen uh, a lot of changes in that time. Uh, but I'm interested to know first what, what made you decide that you wanted to get in the games industry? Um, well, I mean, I started programming in the 80s, really, on the first generation of home computers, Spectrum, Commodore, Atari ST, Amiga, all of those sorts of things. I uh, started playing games and, uh, you know, really rapidly started to think, how this is, how is this done? How did they make this game? How did they provide this fun and enjoyment that I'm getting to... Uh, and uh, so then started just to teach myself how to program, and I was probably towards the end of my secondary school, I suppose, and then um, went to university and um, did a degree in engineering and then was lucky enough to start working as a junior programmer. But I worked in, while I was in um, in university, I was working my summers at in QA department at, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to have got my foot in the door there, really. And then once I'd finished my degree, I was lucky enough to get a job as a junior programmer. And that's pretty much how it all started. I suppose like that gateway for getting in the games compared to now, it's not the hotbed of competitiveness that we see yeah. nowadays. Um, what was it like? Was it pretty much well, turning up and asking if there were a job or... It was, well, to... it was... It was literally, uh, I know it's a cliche, but it was literally, it's not what you know, it's who you know back then. And and I was lucky enough to know people who worked in the games industry and um, were lucky enough to give me a job in the QA department, paying me 50 quid a week. And, uh, you know, it kept me in beer and that was all I required really at the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, nowadays it's, you know... Uh, it's totally different. It's a yeah. completely different outlook. You know, this was back in the days was uh, when I started, it was still people programming in the bedrooms and uh, it wasn't the multi-million billion pound industry it is now, you know. Yeah. Where did you start? Any any highlights in your career before D3T? Well, I mean, I started working at a company called Digital Image Design, which was based in Warrington, which was uh, a flight simulator, hardcore flight simulator, uh, you know, F-22, EF-2000, all those sorts of games. And then um, moved over to Rage Games in Liverpool and then to um, Warthog in Cheadle and to uh, then effectively then landed at Traveller's Tales in Nutsford and Wilmslow and was there for 11 years doing the little Lego yeah. games. So I think... Uh, yeah, 18 Lego games in the 11 years, I think I did. So um, it was quite full on, but I'm um, really proud of the work I did there. Um, and we had some really good games working on some fantastic IPs, you know, lucky enough to be yeah. on Star Wars and Batman and Indiana Jones and Jurassic World and uh, Harry Potter and all those amazing, you know, IPs that you got a chance to, uh, to work on. So really lucky. 